She presses the tip of the pen firmly against the paper. Let me guess, there's going to be a big black blob of ink. But her hand doesn't move. Instead, a tiny blot of ink collects around the tip of her pen. Told you. Monica lifts her pen and starts at the little blotch. For some reason, she feels compelled to run her fingers across it. As she does so, the black ink smears across the paper, ruining Monica's canvas. <sighs> Out of spite for herself, Monica presses her pen down once again, letting the ink collect. She creates a second smear on the paper. Come on, Monica, just move your hand. Monica writes, This is what I get for seeking perfection. A stain. Monica slides the paper away from her and puts her head down on the desk. <laughs> She's sleeping again, man. The air conditioner seems louder today. I'm here. Hi. Monica hears Siri approach her desk, then stop for a second, probably reading the piece of paper. Then she sits down in the adjacent desk. Bad day? Um, me too. You too? The new flyer looks good. You've been working so hard. On the club. But also something else, I think. I can't do it. I'm sorry. It's just it's so hard to just be vulnerable. Um... Siri takes the sheet of paper from Monica's desk. She writes something down and stares at it for a while. Can I trust you? Of course. You can trust me with anything. Sayori gazes at Monica with sadness in her eyes. Understanding the signal, Monica takes the paper from Sayori's desk and reads it. Oh, fuck. Oh, God. I'm getting shivers of the original game again, man. Sometimes I want to die. Sayori? This is really, really hard for me. Her voice shakes. So, if I can do it, then can you too? Because you're like a million times better than me. That's completely not true. Siri takes a deep breath trying to steady herself. That's something about me that I've never told anyone before. Even now my head is like screaming at me to stop. Wait, you don't, you don't have to force yourself. I mean, just because of that promise yesterday. I want to. It just feels right. I mean, maybe it's part of the reason I came to this club in the first place. This is the literature club. I trust you more than I'm scared. At those words, Monica stands up. Sayer must have taken days to work up the courage for this. Were Monica's own futile but genuine efforts actually the push that Sayori needed? Sayori's deliberate breaths can be heard over the air conditioner. As she prepares herself to continue, Monica waits in gentle silence. I have this problem where I get really upset when people worry too much about me. I can't control it. It's like, why waste your energy worrying about me when you could just be happy instead? So I never tell anybody about these kinds of thoughts I have. It's so much easier to just smile and help everyone else be happy. But that's terrible. That's what Monica wants to say, but she stops herself in fear of saying the wrong thing. It's just that if everyone knew about it, they wouldn't treat me the same anymore. Like, whenever I'm not smiling, everyone will worry about me and ask me what's wrong. I know that because it used to be like that. Sierra pauses, seeming to recall something in the past. I just want everyone to be happy. That's the most important thing to me. And letting people look inside my head doesn't bring happiness to anyone. Sayori pauses again, her solemn expression making her look almost like an entirely different person. How did you find the courage to tell me this? You're not worried that I'll be one of those people too. I am worried. Part of me really hates myself for doing this. But another part of me, I think I just felt like it would be different this time. Whenever we talk about what the club is supposed to mean, I kept feeling like it was right for me to do. Especially after you've been trying so hard to express yourself too. It just made me feel like I could say it in confidence. And our relationship, <clears throat> and our friendship, sorry, <laughs> doesn't have to change. <laughs> it's so silly. The club, oh fuck, I skipped past it, I'm sorry. Monica feels a tightening sensation in her heart. A feeling of connection as Sayori's emotions radiate between them. Me too. I was so lost until you showed up. You're so brave, Sayori. You're so strong and brave. I don't even compare. Malka steps forward. But if nothing else, I can at least offer you some hug energy. If you'd like. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. I could... I'm actually crying. I can feel the tears in my eyes. Oh my god. Wordlessly and without a smile, Sayori rests her forehead on Monica's shoulder. 
Though their contact, Monica can almost feel the torrent of thoughts swimming in Sayori's head. And in this moment, enchanted by the air of the club, Monica realizes that all the days that have passed, this is the one where she really, really hopes that nobody new walks through the door. She speaks softly. You're like the sweetest girl I've ever met. You can say anything. I'll never judge you. I promise. Sayori's breath begins to quiver. She takes several deep breaths, trying as hard as she could, as hard as she can to start speaking. To say the thing she never once dared to say out loud. Finally, she speaks in a choked voice. I'm so worthless. I'm worthless. And everyone would be better off without me. She suppresses a sob as a tear falls down her cheek. I'm just a convenience. I'm just an inconvenience to everyone. I'm not good at anything and it just feels like everyone just has to put up with me. And I hate it. I hate it. The more Sayori speaks, the more she fails to control her voice, falling victim to an overwhelming sadness clutching at her throat and chest. I don't want to have these thoughts. I want them to go away. And now I'm making you put up with me and I just want to die. As soon as Sayori loosens her composure, Monica becomes determined to keep her own. She only wants to be what Sayori needs right now, so she won't let any sadness show. Her voice comes through as soft as gentle. This isn't putting up with you, it's just being your friend. Monica offers a few words of comfort, but she knows Sayori said it herself, that the thoughts Sayori experiences are ones that don't belong, and Monica can't magically make them go away. The most she can do is help Sayori battle them, like any good friend would do. You have so much value to me and your other friends too. This club wouldn't have been the same without you. I really, really mean that. You coming here was the best thing that could have ever happened. Even if we never got any other members, I would still be happy. That's what you brought here. You brought us a vision and you also brought happiness. And that's your favorite thing to do, right? Sayori doesn't respond, but Monica feels her gently nod. No more words are needed between them. The two share their embrace for a while longer, Monica letting Sayori take as much time as she needs. Once her breathing steadies and her sniffles fully cease, Sayori lifts her head and wipes her eyes. Jesus Christ, that was intense, man. Oh my God. Ah, oh, they definitely needed that drawing there to convey that thing, man. I guess I needed that. Some days are harder than others. Well, I'm here whenever you need me. But any other time, I'll make sure that things are the way they usually are. If that's what makes you happy. Um, thanks. You're the best. <laughs> no, you are. The two exchange smiles. You know, I'm sorry to bring this up all of a sudden, but... Have you considered talking to a professional? Sayori nods. It's scary, since it's already so hard to tell people. Yeah. Well, of course it will always be your choice, but if you're ever looking to find the courage for it, I can do my best to help you. Thanks. I think it helps knowing that you would. Sayori starts suddenly yawns and stretches. Wow, that made me tired and hungry. <laughs> well, I won't make you do any work today if you're not up for it. No, I want to. I mean, I can say that it's definitely one thing that makes me happy. Marcus smiles. But I might want to get a snack first. All of a sudden, the sound of the door causes the two of them to turn their heads. The door opens halfway, then stops. A face peeks inside. A face that seems familiar. Oh, are you gonna... Oh, you're just gonna end it there? Oh, is that the whole point of the next one then? Yeah, that's them. Oh, it probably is, isn't it? Yuri's gonna be in next part, right? Yeah. But honestly, guys, I was gonna keep recording, but I'm two hours into recording right now, and my voice is starting to, like, just die. So, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to stop for today. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, obviously like it. Dislike if you didn't like it. Comment if you want. Subscribe if you want. And hit the bell if you do so desire. This was Doki Doki Plus, insert episode number here, and I'll catch you guys another time.